Welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Rates. I'll be your host, and this podcast exists to help you improve your communication skills. Whether you communicate one-on-one to a team, from a stage, or from behind a screen, we know that when we improve our communication skills as leaders, it exponentially changes everything. It improves our relationships, it improves our leadership skills, and it improves our business skills. So let's get ready to dive into this next episode. As you think about, you know, what are, I mean, we talked about that as, as kind of, you know, being a successful speaker, what are, what are some of the other kind of key components, you know, are, are there some skills and practices daily, oh, pra- weekly? Practically, practically, you've got to build a business. Yeah. You've got to build a business and, and let me, let me, let me ruin your day right now. The reality for most of you listening to this podcast right now in your Honda Accord um, driving to wherever you're driving your next meeting, you're meeting your friends at Starbucks right now for a meeting. Uh, maybe you're a pastor listening to this and have, you know, working on your message for Sunday. The reality for most of you is most of you aren't going to get a call to speak for 30 grand for, for, you know, whatever company. Um, that's just not the reality. In fact, that speaking business is kind of eroding away. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's becoming the lot the version of the lottery. You know, when I used to work in the music business, we always talked about, you know, that there was always some artist that won the lottery, you know, and you know, the lottery winners, you know, Taylor Swift, she won the lottery. Um, Adele won the lottery. Bruno Mars won the lottery. They had a big hit. Something got everyone's attention. And now all of a sudden, you know, and, you know, these rules apply to almost anyone that's not a quarter million dollar speaker. Mm. And I'll tell you a secret, the, the quarter million dollar speakers, they're all former presidents of the United States of America for the most part. <laughs> Their names in Clinton, Bush, and Obama. Yes. And people need to know, people need to know that you're going to bring a ton of value. And the reality is you're probably not going to make the money from getting paid by organizations. Many of you, I know many of my most successful friends in the speaking industry make the money by going and paying to be on stages. Mm. You know, they go and buy buy slots and then sell people into their programs Mm. and you've got to build a real actual business around that speaking is really just i know you just had josh ship on and i remember hearing hearing josh ship say years ago you know your back of the room is going to be what's more powerful than what you do on the front of the room i remember him saying that Mm. i've literally got a piece of paper on my bulletin board in my closet where i keep my printer um from 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 notes from a josh ship talk and where he talked about the back of the room and you know, how much, you know, you're going to make from selling things and getting people to the back table to buy your books and to buy your courses and to buy your other things. And, you know, that, 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 that reminds me that, you know, you know, I think we all had, you know, I was, I was a youth pastor for years. I did this. I had the illusion when I started to shift into doing speaking that everybody was going to start calling me and I just, they would just give me the same money that ACUF and all these guys get. And in reality, a lot of these guys aren't getting that. They just tell, they're just telling you are, I'm sure John ACUF is, he's a good dude. Um, but I think that's, that, that's sort of like chasing the, that's like going and buying a lottery ticket every week and thinking you're actually going to win. Now, my mm. wife and I actually do go and buy lottery tickets when they get up over, like, I think Powerball was just a half million bucks and we bought a ticket a couple of days ago. Um, because we always do that. And then we ask ourselves, what about our life? Would we change if we won the lottery? And how can we move our life now to that? place mm. what and, and for me I, if i won the lottery my geography would change but what i do with my life i would not stop doing the thing i would not stop writing i would not stop doing my books i would not stop being on your podcast jason i would still mm. be doing all of these things yep. because i love what i do i can't believe i get to do this right and so the more that your life looks like that the better the better you are and i think you know, practically, you've got to know what what values. And for me, I know that freedom is a huge value. Time freedom is a huge value of mine. Um, and and like like I said, geography freedom is something that we desire to have more of. Of like, you know, I know you live in Florida. We live in Nashville. I love Nashville. Um, but there's a few months of the year we're living in Nashville is not awesome. So <laughs> there's no reason why there's I'm not sitting on my on my my balcony in Florida right now. So like, let's fix that, right? And and I think that. 
you have to know the things that are super, super important to you and start shifting your life. So that's a possibility. Um, and the things that allow you to do that are, are, you know, your services, your knowledge, courses, communities, event, live events. Um, you have to build a portfolio of things that people just like if you were to, you know, if you were to invest your your money in something, you'd invest it in all kinds of different places and all kinds of different companies. And you need to build a portfolio of things that people um, so they can know you that you exist. Um, and in 2024, as we enter this, this new year, one of the things that, you know, one of the high values that people are going to have to have is authority. Mm. People are going to have to know, like, and trust you before they buy you, buy from you. Yep. And a book is a fantastic way for people to know, like, and trust you. A podcast is a great place for people to know, like, and trust you. Starting a community, a membership is a great pay place for people to know, like, and trust you. Courses are a great place for people to know, like, and trust you. Going on other people's podcast, um, or as we said in the 90s, OPP, you know, other people's <laughs> platforms. That's yep. that's the real power of platform right there. It's not Michael Hyatt's book, but getting on other people's platforms and learning from them and sharing your knowledge with them and, and, and gleaning from them. And so, you know, you've got to build uh, – you've got to build your authority and build your, what you bring. Because honestly, for me, um, sure, man, I care a ton about what you speak about on stage, but from a business perspective, your biggest value that you bring to me, I mean, you know, we, we mentioned ACUF, ACUF and I've gotten arguments about this. I was like, cause he has a thing that he doesn't share on Twitter about the events that he's going to speak at for the most part. And I'm like, bro, as an event planner, that's all I care about. Mm. what your value that you've created is your platform and your ability to share people. And I pay my speakers for their people that get to sign up under their code and their link because I get it. Like yep. you're sharing your platform and I want to reward you for that. Yep. But I think, I think the biggest value that you bring to a live event or unless it's, unless it's an association, like unless it's an internal gathering of like, um, you know, the national, you know, or, or first bank is bringing you in, right. And you're speaking to them or, you know, Keller Williams is bringing them in to speak to your real estate agents. Unless you're going to those places, people are going to want you to have a platform built that says, man, people might come because of that person. Mm. And I know that that part, nobody, nobody wants to talk about that, but that's a real big part of building yep. an effective business is letting people know that like, you know, when you see John Maxwell is somewhere and John Maxwell shares, hey, I'm going to be at this conference, you trust it. Yeah. And you go because you wanted to see John. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's super, super important. And there are very, very few people that have gotten to the place that have earned the right to not even have to share. And 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 John Maxwell is one of them. Mm -hmm. And the other guy named John that I mentioned, I don't think he's there yet. Because I don't think enough people, a lot of people know, like, and trust him, but not enough people who just see and see his face and show up because he's in the room. Yeah. And that's just, that's just the reality of it is we have to, you know, we live in a world where people vouching for other people. Like I said, you're one relationship away, but somebody vouched for you to me and said, Hey, my friend, Jason really could benefit from this. Can you help him get there? You know, and that's how you got to the thing. If somebody mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. this dude, you need to know, and you could help him. Can you help him, please? And it was somebody legitimately that we both spoke at a conference together in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. <laughs> um, right. And so, um, you know, I think it's, that's one relationship. That's a guy that I sat backstage and hung out with at a conference um, who vouched for you. Right. Yep. And like, here we are. And, um, you know, you have to be willing to do that for the places that you go and the places that you speak and you have to build, you know, going back to the field of dreams, you have to build something that people want to be a part of. Yep. And you can't just pray that they're going to show up because they're not right. You've got to go out, you've got to go out and do the work and show up and invite them and create things that are compelling. I still hear from people, bro, who don't know that I have a book, who don't know that I have a bit, you know? Yep. One of the guys that came this year was like, man, I just heard about the thing. And I'm like, man, you have been, I have known you since 1992. <laughs> right. 
I email people about it on a mo- almost monthly basis, talking about the thing. I post about it on every social media platform, and, and to the point where I think I'm blue in the face, right? Like, but that's how it is, and yep. you have to keep talking about the things that are important to you, and eventually, eventually, you know, it all kind of lines up, and people start to to hear and trust and show up. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. What What do you think are some, I mean, these are, oh, this is just gold and so incredibly helpful. What are some of the practical things that a speaker has to have in place as far as their personal brand? You know, what are the things that are like, these are the non-negotiables, you know, have, have these tools in place so you can't, you know, you can send that to people. You can show people what you got, you know, those kind of things. A website. Yep. Um, some video proof that you're not awful. Yep. Um, my next thing I really got to work on is the speaker reel. Yes. Uh, um, and I've just not done one because I really haven't, I've not had to. Um, it's mostly been relationships that have gotten me on stages. But for other people to get you on stages, you've got to have proof. You've got to have some sort of a media kit slash press kit. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of do a hybrid of that. And you've got to be present. You've got to be present in short form video online. Um, You've got to have a website. Always have a website. The things that you always have to have is you've always got to have a website. You've always got to have an email list. You know, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, they can all go away. And if that's the only place that you're connected to people, Yep. And I've watched people lose their accounts and they lose their business in the process. Oof. So don't 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 outsource your livelihood to social media platforms that you're the product in Silicon Valley. Mm. You know, build an email list. Um Yep. I don't know anyone that says, man, I I wish I I wish I would have waited a little longer to build an email list. <laughs> uh, I yes. think you've got to have a lead magnet. You've got to have something that gets people into your into your infrastructure, you know. Um, yep. I think those are the bare minimums. Is there, any, are there any that you can think of that I didn't mention? No, no, those are, th- those are it. Those are it. Going back earlier, you and I were talking about, uh, you know, some of the other, you know, possible revenue generators. You know, I've been toying around with this idea of, you know, kind of doing a speak with people, uh, community membership, you know, and kind of looking at that and trying to figure out, you know, okay, what was that? What was that look like? What content could I provide? Uh, you know, may, maybe some advice. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, you know, take advantage of our time here together. But it, do you think that's something that as you look at... No, but you should take advantage. And that's the thing, right? When you get an opportunity to learn from people, take advantage of that opportunity. Yes. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If If I knew John Maxwell was down the road at my local coffee shop, which happens to be called the Fainting Goat, I would be sitting there with J-Max asking him everything I possibly could. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would, before all of that, I just want to sit down at his feet and say, thanks, bro. That's right. Thanks for saying yes. Thanks for doing what other people told you you couldn't do. Um, There's a couple of talks he's given that have changed my life. Yep. Um, and I would want to do that. I would want to take advantage of that. So never apologize. Yeah. Love it. Never love apologize it. for getting help. Love it. Um, well, before you answer about the, the, the first question, I wanted to say you are so right on and it's so, uh, so great to hear another person say that. Cause sometimes you read people and they're like, yes, you know, speakers or events, you know, they're really not, you know, all that important. Some of the most pivotal moments of my life, just like you said, listening to Maxwell in, you know, Cobra Arena. Like, I still remember his talk. Are you a turkey or an eagle? I'm like, holy cow, that's 30-some years ago. That's how powerful that talk was. I mean, it just yeah. it just pivoted me. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. A talk has the power. I love I love Andy Stanley shares a, sto- shares a story um, about speakers of the power of our words. He shares a story about on Sunday. He was talking about how that, you know, honesty and integrity – and this guy came in his office on Monday morning and was like, hey, bro, your message on integrity yesterday really hit me across the forehead. Um, I've, I'm about to go turn myself in for tax evasion. Oof. 
And it was a reminder of like, as a communicator, our words carry weight. And you have yeah. to know, you have to know when you say things that the influence that you have over others has some weight to it. And the, and then the, 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 the more influence you have in someone's life, um, the more weight your words are going to carry. And so yeah. be aware of that as a leader and a leadership. You love talking about leadership. You know, as a leader, we've got to think about that, man. We got to think about when we hop on a stage that with the things that we say are going to potentially move people to make decisions um, that may change the trajectory of their life for good or for bad. That's right. That's right. Um, so, okay. So going back to the advice then, you know, for like a young, so speak with people is a year and a half old. We're, I think we're building a decent uh, brand. I think people were starting to get brand awareness. People understand, hey, we help leaders improve their communication skills because when you improve your leader, your, your communication skills, you really can, you can improve your life. You can improve your relationships, your leadership, and your business because it, like you just said, it all, it all, it all goes on communication. So, you know, primarily we do trainings for the kind of the everyday leader in corporate America. So we're doing, you know, healthy communication skills trainings. We're helping them improve those day-to-day customer relations. You know, then I do, you know, coaching for communicators. So if, Hey, if you want to, you know, really improve your public speaking skills, okay, we're going to, we're going to help you go deeper into that. So now we're at a place where we're going, okay, we've got decent traction with the podcast. We've got a weekly blog that has incredible, you know, leadership insights from different, you know, authors and leaders. So now I'm going, okay, do we create, and we have got a Facebook group of about a thousand leaders who every week people are, you know, we're learning and growing and, you know, all those kind of things. So I'm at a place where I'm going, okay, you know, I'm trying to learn from other, other folks and, and a membership kind of keeps coming up because we're like, we can create this community where, you know, people that are really like, Hey, I want to, I want to dial down and invest in my communication skills. I want to improve with my one-on-one, my from a stage, my to a team, my from a screen, you know, we can really, you know, drill down into that. So I guess my question to you is looking in, you've kind of followed along. You've thrown me some advice, you know, here and there. Is that something you would say, ah, stop. Don't even focus on that right now. Keep, you know, keep moving forward or yeah, look at getting a community so you can start building those people who are passionate about this message. Let me answer that question in two seconds and answer what I think is the one thing that keeps people from actually building and growing their business. Mm. As we wear a bootstrapping, like it's a, like it's a badge of honor, mm. you know, that we like pull ourselves up by our boots and we try to, you know, um, you know, we try to do this as a solo act and trying to do it alone, man, is an instant success for failure. That's an mm. interesting, st- it's an interesting, it's an instant step towards failing at the opposite of success, right? It's if you're going to try to do this alone, if you're going to try to just, you know, manage your way through that, that's, that's the quickest way that you can fail, you know? And I think mm. so often, like going back to my, you know, restaurant analogy that, you know, like so many of us just kind of get fallen, you know, we find ourselves doing this work um, maybe because another, <laughs> a lot of us have found ourselves in this situation because something else stopped working and we didn't have a choice. Some of us have made the choice to do this work. Some of us have, have evolved in this work, but the quickest way I think to fail at it is to not get the help that you need. And not surround yourself with yeah. people that can actually help you get there. And because, um, you know, we live, we live in such a, Man, I'm going to hurt some feelings, but that's okay. All of my friends that have come from a faith-based background believe in their calling the least. Ooh. The people that I have the hardest time coaching as of late are people who would look me in the eye and say that I follow a big, a big God, but they tend to live small lives. Ooh. They're called, but they're not convinced. They haven't actually gone and said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to take some risks along the way. Um, and business is risky. Um, but what's even more risky is not living the life that you're meant to live mm. um, to getting to the end of your life and not swinging after those things that you were called to do and created for. Um, to answer the membership question, man, I think, you know, I mean, I have a membership that I've had literally, I've got the plaque hanging on my wall of my membership program that I've, I've kind of held off launching because you kind of are waiting for the perfect m- moment. Right. And there's never a perfect moment. Um, 
in order to have a business, I like to call them on ramps. Mm. Businesses are like toll roads. You're in Florida. You get this. Toll roads have less on ramps. But you have to have some. This podcast, on ramp. It's how people get into your infrastructure. But different people are going to get um, into your into your on ramp in a different way. And if you were starting a business from zero, build from the bottom, if you can build from the bottom up. Now the quickest way, the quickest way to build a business is from the top down. Mm. And so higher ticket, higher tier, higher sales, because those people aren't playing games. Right. For the most part, the more people pay, pay me, the more they take things seriously. You know, I have a coaching a coaching offer that I do in Mastermind that I know should have a zero, one more zero at the end of it than it does. Mm. I know it should be thousands of dollars, but I know that the people who really need it um, would could never afford it if I didn't if I didn't make it affordable. But I also know sometimes that that's actually what's keeping me from serving the people that really could use my help. Ooh. And, um, but you have to know, you have to know who you're called to serve. That's why the why is so important. The why and the who, man, you know, who are those people? And I know for seasons, but I also know for the season of what I'm going into in 2024, that there are some people that I can't serve anymore. And so I've got to create a, a process or a system because those people have to keep getting served Yes, and they need to be served through my community. So they have a place to grow up, right? Yep. But they can't be served. One, they, they can still be served by me, but not one-on-one by me. If that yep. makes sense. And so that's why a membership really comes into play as you begin to focus more on those higher tiered items is if you, if you're not going to get people in the on-ramp, and for me, right. like I do an event, you know, do live events. And one of the main things I need to do is maintain the community because people love the community. I know that the community is special that I've created. Yep. So I'm answering a need. And so to, to answer the question, I, I'd i have to get under the hood a little bit Absolutely. for you and your business to really know. Yep. I'm guessing from what I know about you, I'm guessing that your biggest opportunities for growth. Um, I, I've, I've, I've got this new framework that I've been teaching um, lately. And one of the, and one of the core pieces of it is about what are the activities that you do that generate revenue? Mm. Um, What are the, what are your revenue generating activities? And most businesses don't focus on that and knowing where the money comes from, you know, and most of us get bogged down in the things that just keep us busy. But one of the things that actually generate revenue, that generate leads, that generate people that get out their visa, their MasterCard, sorry, Dave Ramsey, and give you money. (laughs) Yes. What are, what are those, where, where, what are those things? Um, And in reality, for somebody that does what you do, I, I, I would, based on what I know now, your biggest opportunity is in serving people at the highest level. Hmm. Your biggest, your genius is going to be able to help somebody that's great become not amazing, become amazing. Mm. You probably, you're probably going to get stuck in the mud really quick. And I've found myself there that if you're trying to help people that aren't great, become good. And I know that probably is rough because you have a pastoral heart and so do I. And that's a hard thing to say out loud, (laughs) but, but what I found is that there are a lot of people um, that we try to serve that end up keeping us tethered to the shore with them. Mm. And, you know, I think it's super important to know who you're truly called to help and serve. And if it truly is those people at the beginning, man, you've got to build systems and processes and courses and things, you know, your two ninety ninety seven 97 communication course could serve those people all day long. They yeah. don't need a phone call with you. They're not ready for a phone call with you. Right. They're not ready to get your time because your time couldn't help them because they've not even decided that they believe in themselves enough to spend $297. Right. Right. And let me tell you what, if you're listening to this podcast right now and you're wanting to be a speaker and you're struggling to spend $297 to buy Jason's course, you probably should unsubscribe to the podcast and just give it up, give up. 
and not do it anymore. <laughs> because if you can't spend two hundred and ninety seven dollars to invest in yourself and believe in yourself, then man, go do something else. Speak, speaking is definitely not for you. Absolutely. It's not. It's Absolutely. hard. The work is hard. The sacrifices are going to be hard. But if your message really matters, you'll find the resources to get the course and to learn how to be a better communicator and to learn how to like build a business around your brand um, that actually supports you and your family. Mm. So good. So powerful. Oh, Terry, you, I mean, you, I, I, our conversation has gone so much longer than the time I asked and I can't thank you enough because you've just, I mean, I've taken two pages of notes here. I mean, it was just, and it was the same thing at the think conference. I, you know, I got my notebook that I got at the thing and I'm just filling it up. So I can't thank you enough before I, before I do, I know about, about, that's, yeah, that's, da- that's a dangerous place to be in because it's easy to take notes. Mm. It's hard to take action. Oof. And I would, I love that you take notes and I love that you've got all these things to, to go and do, but man, pick something from those pages and take action on it. If you've listened to this podcast today, and if you've been encountering Jason and his work, Pick something and go and do it. Start with something. If you heard me say, I need to get a website, go buy your name as a URL. Start there. Go start taking action yep. and then start start chiseling down a list and go and actually do that thing. Because here's the reality for most people. Most people are going to hear this podcast at the beginning of 2024. They're going to listen. They're going to hear our conversation. And then they're going to be sitting around in the year, beginning of 2025, and they've not taken any action to change their life. Mm. And that's a tragedy, man. That's right. That's a tragedy when you have access to the information. Yep. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big, one of my biggest principles in life is I believe that the, that the, 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 the things that we're given, the callings that we're given, that we have stewardship, that mm. we've been given stewardship over, over those ideas. Yep. And the opportunity to take advantage of those is only available to those that are good stewards Oof. and take advantage of the knowledge that you've been imparted. And the fact that Jason takes the time out of his life and away from his family to create this podcast and to create resources for you so that you can actually get on those stages and accomplish the goals that you have to be a great communicator and to say things that matter and impact people. And, um, man, don't just fill notebooks full of, full of, That's right. um, and I'm saying the same thing to myself. Yep. Don't think I'm just picking on you or Jason. I've yep. got things that I want to do. And we've got to, you've got to look at the opportunities that are in front of you and go, man, what am I going to do today that's going to generate revenue today, that's going to make a difference today, that's going to get me in a place? Because here's the reality. The ideas that we have in our heads don't change the world. Mm. Mm. The books that you want to write that are between your ears don't change anyone's life. The new talk, the new course, the new membership, the this, the that, the podcast, the that you want to launch isn't going to do anything for anyone, including yourself, until you take action and actually do it. So I would encourage you to pick a few things every week that you want to take action and you actually want to get the ball down the field and not just believe, but actually have the audacity to take the action that makes the impact that you desire to make with your life. That's right. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Wow. Wow. It's not very often I get through a a podcast conversation and I'm, (laughs) I'm just fired up. I'm like, all right. I'm looking over at my dream wall over here, you know, the, the revenue goals, all that kind of stuff. Terry, thank you. Thank you. Well, dude, thank you for having me on. It was a blast. If anybody wants to connect, if you're kind of stuck about your thing, I have an amazing free course that I've created. Um, it's one of the, it's, it's, it's a, it's a compilation of the processes that I take leaders through and that's a discover your thing.com. Mm. It's a hundred percent free. It's actually a quick assessment to figure out where you're at. If you're trying to figure out what your thing is, I've, I've got processes that I've used with Fortune 500 companies that I've used um, in organizations that I've used at the thing. They're what I use in my coaching practices to help people figure out why it is they're here, what their what 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 their why is to get drilled down on that. So I'd encourage you to not just go and sign up for the free course, but to actually go and do it. Um, you get an email right away with your results. It kind of tells you where you're at as a leader and an entrepreneur. Yep. And then right away, I start giving you free content um, to, for how to discover your thing and how to like put it in action. I love that. I love that. Let me do this though. I forgot some rapid fire questions because I got so into the content. These okay, are just, let's go. We're, we're building a library of, you know, all these great resources. You know, tons of speakers. You're, you've been around the industry. Do you have a favorite? You personally love to listen to them. 
You just get so filled up by them. Man, I have a few, and a few for different reasons. I love yep. Erwin McManus. Oh. Um, Erwin's book, um, or Erwin's book and a conversation with Erwin um, over a Cracker Barrel changed my life. Um, John Maxwell is another one. Yep. Uh, those are those are those are both men of faith that have impacted me. Obviously, Seth Godin. I love yep. him as a communicator. Um, th- those are some of my, those are those are some of the three that come to mind. I love it. Is there a podcast that it just fills you up, either development or guilty pleasure? That you're like, people need to know about this podcast. Oh man, I've got a. I I, I always try to to mix between some random ones. Yep. Just because I think it's important to like have when I'm on the road, like these are when I'm in, 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 in the, uh, um, obviously I love, um, leadership. That's one of my things that I love to dive into. Craig Groeschel's leadership content is fantastic. Yep. Um, Patrick Lee and Coney's the working genius podcast is brilliant. Um, I love data Carvey and David Spade have, have a podcast. Oh, together. so good. And they frequently have like Adam Sandler on, um, it's not clean. Um, and so obviously, good. of course, I have I have the Making Elephants Fly podcast. That's right. Um, that, that I love. I love doing. I I I I, I listen very selectively to podcasts. Um, I, you know what? You know who I, what, what the kind of podcast that I go for is when like legends interview legends. Mm. Um, Brene Brown interviewed Simon Sinek on her podcast, and I was like, I'm going to listen to that. Yep. Um, so I tend to gravitate towards those because I, I they tend they tend to have a level of trust with each other that they may not have with you or i yeah um but yeah the Brene brown and simon Sinek stuff when they've been, when they've been on interviewing each other has always mm. just been um just because they're just such a yep there's such a like you know one of the things i've been talking a lot about in leadership is the idea of of, of people who are amateurs and people who go pro and those are definitely people who are pros, right? Like yes. they're just next level. And it's not that they're that remarkable. They just took action. Yeah. They were just like you and I struggling to figure it out six, eight years ago, man. That's yep. just reality. Yep. And they've taken they've taken massive action, have gotten to be the ones that you and I are talking about. It's like, hey, they're our heroes. They're the ones we look up to. And we, you know, obviously we don't agree with everything they say, but I'm also like I've also learned the power of like you can learn I can learn something from just about anybody. If yep. I'm willing to lean in and listen and notice. Yep. I love it. And then a book. Is there a leadership or communication book that you're like, ooh, every every leader on the planet should read this book? Oh, man. Oh, gosh. I saw the <laughs> book question. The Traveler's <laughs> Gift ooh. by Andy Andrews. Um, is I don't even like fiction. But it's it's the book on my shelf next to the Bible that has the most ink on it. Yeah. Um, I love it. And then, you know, obviously there's some other ones that, that, that I would, um, I, I've been reading some biographies lately. I love, I love, um, I've been reading Roy, the, the biography of Roy Disney, mm. um, Walt Disney's brother lately. Uh, oh, wow. that's been good. Yep. Nobody talks about, nobody talks about Roy, but there would be no Disney without Roy Disney. Right. Uh, he was the one that got the money and that actually, took Walt's crazy ideas and turned them into action. Wow. Wow. I love it. Okay. So you told us about discoveryourthing.com. Where else should we send people? We'll put them in the show notes, put in the Facebook group, all that kind of stuff. Well, if you want to attend the thing, you can go to the thing.live and attend, um, use the code podcast, get you a discount. We're about, by the time this episode airs, um, the thing Nashville and the thing Orlando will be on sale to the general public for 2024. Okay. Uh, my website is just terryweaver.com. Um, if anybody has, um, I'd, I'd, I'd do corporate training and do, I do a little bit of a dabbling in the speaker realm and I'm actually, we've, we've, we've created a new product to really help people who are ready to like go super fast in a year and build a brand, um, a personal brand that's centered around speaking in authority, um, that we've actually just built out. So I'm excited. We'll be rolling that out the first part of 2024. Excited about that. I love it. I love it. Terry, thank you. This was absolute gold. Appreciate you so much. Just uh, your relationship and your generosity and your wisdom. And so thanks for being on the Speak to People podcast. Man, thanks for having me. 
Well, thank you for joining us on another episode of the Speak With People podcast. We hope that you were encouraged. We hope that you were inspired and challenged to improve your communication skills. I want to thank you again for being a part of the Speak With People podcast community. Make sure you don't miss out on being a part of the Speak With People Facebook community group. Just head to Facebook, type in Speak With People, scroll down and join our community because every single day we're encouraging each other, we're helping each other to improve our communication skills. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next episode.